Thank you for inviting me to present uh, my recent work, The Mobile Micro Giving Under Economy Incentives and Audience Effect. This is uh, uh, recently uh, accepted at MIS Quarterly, which is a prime, uh, premier IS journal in the, in the field of uh, information systems. And I'm the only assistant professor of the information systems and I, in ISO and the department. And this is a, a joint work. This is the joint work with uh, Professor Anand Gopal from NTU and Dogun Lee, Professor Dogun Lee from Boston University and Dong uh, Shin from our ISOM department. So let me briefly introduce myself first. And yeah, as I told you, I'm the, one, uh, I'm the only, and my research interest lies in the customer analytics, mobile commerce, digital nudging, digital transformation, and pro platform and pr protocol economy. Uh, in the method, method-wise, I'm, uh, uh, I'm usually conducting a uh, rand large-scale randomized field experiment by collaborating with the com uh, industry ex expert or the companies. So these days, I, uh, I collaborate with uh, or many, advise many startup companies and uh, venture capitals uh, in in East Asia and as well as the US. So, and also I'm currently uh, advising advising uh, startup companies founded by the HKUST alumni, and we are uh, we are doing research together now. So, if you guys are interested in, feel free to let me know. Okay, so why don't you start? So this this talk is about the so. Uh, this paper is about the uh, use of mobile to uh, increase the donation contribution. So as, you, as, as all of us know that the mobile devices are the consumer's primary digital tools, such as uh, you guys are enjoying the shopping, banking, and finding a dating partners, and communicating with others, and watching videos, and social networking. Many of everyday lives, we are using mobile phone and mobile phone is located always within our arm's length, right? So the mobile phone is a primary device and the primary digital tool in our everyday lives from, from, uh, from the uh, early morning to the late night, right? And even during now, so I think most of you, most of you guys have a mobile phone in your, in your arm's length now, right? So this is a, this is a very, uh, this is a kind of extension of ourselves and also primary device for the everyday, our everyday lives in these days. So, the digital mu media usage time is driven by the mobile apps. So, total digital media usage time, but the mobile, the mobile accounts for the more than 50% of the usage. So, and as a consequence, so spending of, think about the spending about the money. So mobile commerce, so is there anyone who haven't purchased anything from the mobile? Right. So everybody use the, everybody have an experience to purchase a, at, least a, at least something from the mobile, right? So the mobile is the primary primary channel for any kinds of online retailer in these days. So, and the statistics shows that mobile commerce accounts for about 73% of the e retail e-commerce in these days. And what about the, from the for-profit world to the non-profit world? And what about the non-profit organization? Is there anyone who contributed uh, a certain amount of money to the charitable organization using your mobile phone? Mostly, none of you guys have experience about that, right? So using the mobile, so while the, while the for-profit in the for-profit world, the use of the mobile is very popular, but the use of mobile in terms of the non-profit world is not that popular. And why? That starts from the, my research question. And there is a consumer behavior, the, the relationship between the consumer behavior and the donor behavior. There, there is a, a huge coupling between the consumer behavior and the donor behavior. Think about the, this is a statistics from 2021 and 13% of the e-commerce sales from the total retail sales. So 13%, so among the every, every retail sales, and 13% accounts for the accounts from the e-commerce. 
And what about the nonprofit world? 12% of the online donation accounts for the uh, 12 uh, online donation accounts for the 12% of the total fundraising. So there is a huge connection between the e-commerce behavior and the online donation. Right? So can you look at the use, use of the mobile channel? Only 28% of the online donations were made using a mobile device in US in 2021. Can you see the, can you see the difference between the, for, the mo, use of the mobile channel between the for-profit and the non-profit? There is a 45% of the difference between the use of the mobile channel between for-profit and non-profit, right? So the mobile commerce accounts for the, around the 70%, more than 73% of the retail e-commerce, but only 28% of the online donations were made using a mobile device. So I think this is a huge opportunity for the non-profit organization because the utilizing, utilizing mobile channel can reduce the cost of the, the cost of the, uh, cost of the operation of the nonprofit organization since the uh, overhead cost management is a super important issue for the nonprofit organizations in these days. And this inspired me to start this project. And how I can, you, how I can ramping up, how I can fill out the, those 45% of the gap between the nonprofit organization's use of the mobile channel and the for-profit organization the use of the mobile channel, okay? So, starting, so how, how I can design, how I can design the, uh, how I can design uh, something that increasing the mobile-based uh, mobile donation. So, I starting from the cost marketing campaign. So when you go to the uh, retail stores, such as uh, Target or Marshalls or uh, those kind of uh, retail stores in US, and you can frequently face with those kind of uh, $1, $5, $10 donation at the checkout counter. So do you want to donate $1 to the St. Jude Hospital? Something like that, right? So we call that this as a cost marketing. So cost marketing is, uh, defined as an offer from a firm, so firm means a, the retailer, right, to contribute a specified amount, $1, $5, $10, to designated cause, St. Jude Hospital in the left side case, and the right side case is about the autism speaks. So designated cause, when customer engage in revenue providing exchange, so at the checkout counter, right? So believe it or not, in 2020, the, those kind of cost marketing campaign raised more than 605 million US dollars. So although it's a $1, $5, $10, it's a small denomination about the money, but it has a scalability, right? Think about that. Can he, can he apply those cost marketing models to mobile world. So this is a, that's why I, I was thinking about the micro giving. So which is a use of the mobile ecosystem in charitable giving for small denomination, but it has to be sustainable. And organically, preferably through applications because SMS, sending an SMS message. So in, so in Hong Kong, we receive a lot of SMS messages, but actually they spend quite a lot of money, right? As compared with sending a, sending a simple push notification, right? Or the mobile app. So the, I want to utilize the mobile applications to solicit the more donations, more fundraising. And three parties in Burwood. First, Mobile app provider, think about the offline cost marketing case. So we have to have a retailer, right? In this case, we need to have a mobile app provider who has a user base. So retailer has a, their own customer base, right? And the mobile app provider has, the, has their own user base. And 
charity or non-profit organization designated cause and individual do potential donors, right? Who are their customers, okay? So we define the micro giving as use of a mobile app as a medium for charitable giving to specific cause in relatively small denominations, okay? So when we start this research project and then we design this kind, we design and testing out the, whether micro giving works in the mobile ecosystem or not. And actually we found a very interesting uh, case from Lyft. So Lyft is uh, one of the competitor of the Uber in the uh, sharing economy market. And Lyft has a round up and donate model. So when you, uh, when you came from Hangout Station to the here, and then you, uh, your Uber price uh, is about the 45 Hong Kong dollar, right? And then you can just add up the $45 to the $50, and remaining $5 will go to the specified charity. So that is the Lyft's model, and which is exactly follows our micro giving case. Use of a mobile app as a medium, Lyft app as a medium, and for charitable giving to specific cause, in this case, the USO is the charitable organization, in relatively small denomination, rounded up, round up. So round up maybe so from the, in, in US, maybe less than $1 or the less than $10, okay? It depends on, it, it depends on how you set, right? So our research, uh, this paper's research question is about how can microgiving be incentivized through the use of appropriate elements of a medium and modality offered by mobile device? And can you increase the donation by using this microgiving campaign? And how we can how we can increase the donation using a using a appropriate elements of the mobile device? The easiest way to attracting more donors is to providing them some gift, right? Or monetary incentive, right? Or give them money, right? Or if you, if, so think about that. If you want to buy something from the, from, the, from the retailing website, and what is the easiest way for them to increasing the short-term revenue? Maybe issuing the discounting coupon or the offering the discount, right? Offering sales, so it's a it's a quite straightforward that use of economic incentives may work to increase the donation rate, but what about the use of the medium characteristics about the mobile device? That is our that is our uh, our focus in this paper, and we can also use the digital notch through the modality of the push notification through the mobile application. And also, mobile devices are very private device, right? So is there anyone who can share your mobile device with others? No one, right? I, sh I can share my desktop with our family members, but no one share your mobile phone with others. And also, even my wife or my son doesn't came into the uh, came into the bathroom right while I'm taking a shower, but I bring mobile phone to the bathroom right. So mobile is a very private device, right? And also it contains a lot of uh, so the use of a mobile itself is a private and the personal nature. And how different economic incentives interact with those private and personal nature of the mobile medium. So that is the focus of this study. So let me go through the one by one. So economic incentives. When you just cutting down the price of the donation, and then it will increase the donation amount, and the don it will affect the donation decision of the potential donors. So that is true. And by doing so, there are two types of the monetary incentives used in the charitable giving. One is matching. So matching is a widely used mechanism for, the, for designing the economic incentives 
So if you donate one dollar and your company or the somebody, some some rich people will match your donation, and the, and the charity will get the double of double amount of the your donation, which is quite widely used. I will show you the one very uh, close example of the matching in the next slide. And what about the another thing? Another thing is about rebate. So rebate is a based on your donation, based on your blood donation, and you will get uh, this kind of a dozen, dozen donuts coupon, or the, you will get a movie coupon, or you will get a discount coupon at the supermarket. Or another example is a tax benefit, right? So if you donate your money and then you can deduct the tax, you can, you can deduct the income tax, right? Of the debt donation amount, right? So matching and rebate is the two example of the designing of the economic incentives in charitable giving. So at UST, we also have a this matching scheme for our alumni endowment fund. So if you donate one dollar and alumnus lease input will match one dollar and government will match two dollar and UST will receive four dollars. Okay? <clears throat> it's a one to uh, and matching three hundred percent of your donation, right? So this is a very widely used scheme to increasing the donation. And rebate, as I told you, tax deduction is the mostly wide, widely used scheme for designing the economic incentives for the charity, charity or nonprofit organizations. And also, Red Cross always use, always give you guys a certain amount of a coupon or the free gift, right? That is widely used one. So based on the donations, right? So if you donate 100 Hong Kong dollars, suppose that if you guys donate 100 Hong Kong dollars to the certain charity, and there is a matching scheme, and there is a rebate scheme, which one do you guys prefer? In the research show that donors actually prefer matching subsidies to rebate subsidies while the price of the donation is same, while the out-of-pocket amount is 100 Hong Kong dollar, but people may prefer matching subsidies. Why? So because, think about that, matching is a corporation. So oh, I'm cooperating with which? I am cooperating with someone. I am cooperating with our alum, alumni association to focus on the benefits for our alumni, alumni fund, uh, endowment fund, or the benefit, our, the charitable organization, right? But the levers, the focus is my endeavor and my benefit, right? So although I, although I donate hundred dollars, but oh yeah, I, I, I was supposed to donate hundred Hong Kong dollars for the goodwill, right? But I received something, right? And the focus is my endeavor and my benefit, and eventually the one grow benefit will decrease in the rebate setting. Because it generates a greedy feeling, right? Oh, so I'm supposed to have, I'm supposed to give $100 for the goodwill, but I received coupon. Oh, it's good for me in some sense, but it generates a greedy feeling. And it's not socially desirable. Socially desirable thing, in, in terms, think about the charitable giving, right? And donation context. And socially desirable thing is, a, oh, more money goes to, more donation goes to the church organization is good, right? So that's why the most of the previous studies and also the offline context, in many of the offline context, found that matching is preferred than rebate subsidies. But, you know, mobile is private device, right? And nobody can watch you. And can you, can you, does this hold in the personal and the private mobile context? 
So mobile is intensely personal and private device, right? As you can see, so there is an audience effect. So if, the, if those kind of uh, I, so in the people act differently when observed by others, right? And also in the public space, people show greater consistency with the socially responsible and the altruistic norms than private domain. So in the matching versus rebate in the mobile situation, in private settings, economic incentives that rely on cooperative framing or social norms to be, altrui uh, to be altruistic are likely to be less effective. So that is our conjecture. And mobile context tends to reduce any audience effect, right? Because it's, it's the most private device that we have, right? If the nobody can watch your behavior, and then you are rebate preference, or yeah, you are matching, matching versus rebate subsidy preference can be changed? That is our research question. And that is what, I, what we wanted to, wanted to show in this study. And also, we also send the digital not, uh, we also uh, designed the digital notching by sending a push notifications. So push notification and leads a increasing attention and then precursor, it can be a precursor to the decision to donate and with the relatively costly and can be easily ignored. And from the company's perspective, it's costly and but it's effective, still effective. Many, although many of you guys uh, uh, just ignore the push notification and turn off the push notification, it's still effective and less intrusive than SMS. So we expect that push notification may lead on increase the likelihood of donation. So we designed the experiment with the Android-based mobile rewards application. So in rewards application, they, you can, you, uh, if you install this application, you can see the advertisement. And then as a return, and you can receive the in-app currency. So at that time, it was about $6 per month. It's quite a lot, right? And then their customers can redeem their in-app currency to the retailer's uh, gift card or cash. And we made a donation function. A charity in the US, so we, we uh, we made we had the option for the charitable giving, and the target charity is a charity in the U.S. to bring food to people facing hunger, which is non-ideological, non-religious, located located across the U.S. and address the common problem. And we worked with the company and then designing the this option option to donate right in this application and adding giving option. So we conducted a experiment and then. Uh, so the best way to establishing the causal impact is to do a A-B testing, right? So field experiment, we, we, uh, we targeted a more than 50,000 uh, 50, user, the application users in the US, and then control groups can only see this donation functionality, right? And then no additional options, so $2, $5, $10 option. Which is, which is a, just a basic condition of the micro giving. And then we add the push notification, and we add the matching subsidy, and we add the rebate subsidy. And what about the result? And this is a push, it, push notification and economic incentive. We firstly designed the matching rate of the 25% and rebate rate of the 20%. And this is the actual push notification that we show. And this is the result. And as you can see, Compared to the control groups, 0.4% of the donation rate, and we can see the 1.53% of the donation rate in push and rebate condition. And what about the next uh, 1.17 push and the match, and T2 is a non-push and only rebate. So it tells that rebate works better than matching when we give a 25% of a matching and 20% of the rebate. So this is, this are, the regression table also confirms that the push notification works, economic incentive works, 
and 20% of the rebate subsidy is more, e more effective than 25% of the matching subsidy to solicit the donation. And we conducted the experiment two to establishing the more granular mechanism. And we conducted a similar kinds of a, uh, experiment, but we increased the economic incentive rates, matching 100% and rebate 50%. And also, because there is a no audience effect, and we reintroduced a pseudo audience effect by introducing the social feed. Social feed is visible to other users in the same treatment group, and your donation information will be shared with others in this kind of social feed. Okay? And this is, this is, a, uh, this is a tool that reintroducing the audience, in, audience effect. And also we send uh, more push notifications as well. And this is the design of the experiment. And this is the push notifications. And this is the actual manipulations of the application. And then we found that T5 and T6 has a highest rate, which is a push with and without feed and match. In this case, we found that Matching, rate, matching subsidy works better than rebate subsidy. Why? So without the audience effect, without the, without the social feed, and we found that push notification and economic incentive still works, but there is a no preference between the rebate and matching when the mat matching and rebate rate goes higher. But when you introduce the Feed, so audience effect, and people actually prefer matching subsidies, inconsistent with offline setting, right? And then audience effect and the privateness of the mobile can explain the rebate versus matching subsidy preference, okay? So the finding of a study is that push notification can increase the donation and economic incentive definitely works. It conforms with the previous studies, even in mobile setting. But the lower, lower, value, lower value rebate versus matching, in that case, people prefer rebate, and higher, higher percentages of the rebate and matching rate, and there is a indifferent preference. But when you, when you add audience effect through the social feed, and people actually prefer matching. Okay, so this is the findings of this study. And for the implications of the, this study, so mobile, we introduced the mobile-based microgiving for the charitable organization. So they need to have a mobile presence and avoid the cost management. So the, this same organization spent a lot of money on this kind of advertisement. I, I, I personally took this picture in the US cities. And mobile app companies' perspective, they have to utilize their scalability and their user base in terms of the, having their corporate social responsibility. And given that the ESG is a very important in these days, so they have to utilize their scalability, right, in terms of their social, social or corporate social responsibility. So we suggest that strategic alliance between charitable organization and the mobile app company can leveraging the scalability of the micro giving so they can achieve the larger amount of donation and relatively low cost so this is the all of the, uh, my presentation and feel free to let me know if you have any questions thank you I have a question for Professor Dong Wang Li. Uh, you mentioned that one motivation of fundraising is social image. So I would like to ask, uh, in your first experiment, is sharing uh, the screenshot or sharing the link about donation in the social media is allowed? I think if, it, if that is not uh, excluded, the coefficient may be underestimated. So. <coughs> Could you, could you elaborate your question more? Yeah, so it, in the first experiment, and what, what, what is your experiment? Uh, my, 
uh, my question is that in the first experiment, mm -hmm. if users are allowed to sh uh, take the screenshot or share their mm -hmm. donation in the social media, oh, okay. if this is allowed, I think uh, maybe uh, the, the the warm glow or the social image motivation works and the coefficient mm -hmm. is underestimated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's true. But, uh, uh, but for, yeah, for our setting, so the, this app uh, cannot doesn't provide any uh, any sharing function, but uh, you know the, these days uh, those kind of uh, functionality is more more important, and uh, and also I can see many of my Facebook friends also uh, when they when uh, when they are birthday and then they donated their certain amount of money and and then sharing with their friends. So those kind of functionality is getting more important. But in our setting, the company doesn't uh, doesn't allow to share the screenshot or the share share to the social media network. So this this uh, this application doesn't link with the, any kinds of social media uh, at that time. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Oliver, you have this next question. Yes, uh, still a question for Professor okay. uh, Lee. Uh, so uh, I really like your idea of this mirroring you know, mm -hmm. between the donation and the retailing. Mm -hmm. and, and apparently here you are constructing a uh, donor to organization kind of relationship, right? Yeah, yeah. Based on a medium. Yeah. But uh, have you ever considered like what would be the kind of uh, behavior if we implement to a uh, donor to donor this kind of setup? Donor to donor. Right, because in your uh, in your paper, like we have this medium, right, and yeah. donor directly donate to organizations, right? Yeah. But uh, sometimes, like in China, we have this kind of donor to donor direct kind oh, of. It's kind of like a. a the donation crowdsourcing platform, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yes. Yeah, so uh, I just curious that uh, how to like generalize generalize the result of this mm -hmm. to a uh, like donor to donor setup. It's uh, I would guess mm -hmm. it's going to be very different, uh, and donor to donor is going to be more exciting. <laughs> you know more interactions. Yeah, so maybe yeah, the, we we can apply this to the uh some those kind of a uh, uh, platform setting. So to the uh like a donor to don donor to doi yeah, it's a donor to doi uh, uh direct 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 uh direct donation setting. So in that case, but I think so in terms of the designing the economic incentives, right? So you have to find the certain uh uh certain supporter, right? Or the platform should provide a certain amount of, uh, uh, certain amount of uh, uh, economic subsidy, so economic incentives to the, to the, do, uh, to the, uh, to the, do, uh, to the donors, right? So the, those kind of a selection of the donors yeah, can be a kind of a challenging uh, issue for those kind of a platform. So I also have a working paper on the, uh, those kind of uh, uh, online online crowdsourcing platforms donation behavior, but uh, uh, we found that uh, this is a totally kind of a different uh, different business. But when you're applying this for, I think economic incentives, economic incentive design is uh, somewhat difficult to implementing the, those kind of uh, uh, online social platform. But if there is uh, any platform wide matching or the rebate uh, subsidy, right? So in that case, I think so. We can also apply this idea directly, yeah, to the uh, when they use the mobile channel. Okay. And yeah. second question for your experiment design, like mm -hmm. you have this kind of uh, the incentive, uh, the matching, and the rebate, right? Yeah. Have you ever considered like uh, adding on gamification element? Oh, so not in not in this paper. Yeah. So. Oh, but you mean in the new paper? <laughs> but yeah, so the, yeah, we can we can also consider those kind of a gamification. And so if you donate more, and then you can get a badge, right? So and then they can they can influence uh, or, or like a, uh, enhancing the social image, right? And then if they can if they can provide if they can pro if the platform provide a badge kind of a thing, but uh, not in uh, maybe those kind of gamification works better in the uh, those kind uh, the the that 
the one that you mentioned in the Third in the, in the prior yeah prior questions so the direct donor doe kind of a platform 